as you see, not to the computer and lacks our voice as professors. This is a, this is a, this is a the topic. Yeah, well, I I realize that students don't like to listen to lectures too much, and because they don't get much out of the lectures actually, and, um, and this is the topic of of today. So I am teaching without lectures since five years, and how I do it. So this is what I would like to share with you. So the why and the what lecture free means for me, and then how I do it. I'll take uh, actually an example, but I go very quickly through it. Um, I don't dare now to go to the model and, and demonstrate just slides. And then some results quickly and next why I am here. So uh, why do we lecture? Uh, did we choose to lecture as professors or teachers even? So uh, you can answer this question yourself, but I think we, lead, we teach, uh, we lecture because we used, uh, or this is the traditional way or the mainstream of it. And uh, I think it came very, uh, in the old times for 1000 years perhaps, where the knowledge was in the heads of some uh, experts and there has been no printed material, no textbooks, and uh, people started talking, lecturing, to, to teach uh, students and others. So then the textbook came and the printed, uh, printed material got cheaper, but we kept lecturing. And then we have now the digital age with a lot of resources and videos and possibilities, and we continue lecturing. And this is, this is, um, this is, this gives the impression uh, as what lectures would be more efficient than or more effective than any, anything else. But there is no evidence for this. I'm talking about science and research, and you can read. So the book by Blee about this. Um, is there evidence for anything that is more effective than lectures? Yes, of course, yeah. This is the active learning. And this paper published by Freeman, most of you probably know it. So when uh, Eric Mezur read it, he said that after this data, it would be probably unethical to teach. Yeah. <clears throat> or to lecture, I mean. So, um, if there is no evidence for the effectiveness of lecture compared with other um, practices, but there is an evidence against it. So why do we keep lecturing? I think because this is the easier way and our resistance to change and why do we do this? There are many reasons, but mostly actually um, that mostly personal uh, reasons about my own need as professor or teacher and not about the needs of the students, and unfortunately. So why I quitted lecturing? Not because I read these papers, and honestly, I didn't know about them at that time, so, but because of the discomfort with lecturing. It is not easy to lecture if you have ambition to, to, bring it, to bring it to the people. It's not so easy. Usually you talk to the first row and they shake heads and sometimes ask questions, but you can never verify how far they are in their, in their learning. This is the motivation. And then um, before, before spring 2018, I, gave, I, I used PowerPoint slides and like everyone, then I switched to, to whiteboard. And in spring 2018, I said, yes, enough of this. Um, um, let, me, let me do something else. Uh, these these uh, explanations that I give in the classroom should be recorded somehow. But that's, this was a very difficult uh, thing to do, uh, knowing that uh, YouTube has millions of videos let me, let me pick up some videos, in, embed them into Moodle and ask questions. So I had two difficulties. The first one, finding the video that uh, adjusts to my teaching plan. And the second difficulty, finding good quality videos. It's a very hard uh, thing to do. So in that semester, I started replacing the videos with active learning uh, active learning um, activities. These are 
um, these are actually interactive explanations. I will talk about them. So and from fall 2018, so there has been only one thing on my Moodle activities. So what is an activity? Now moving to the what. Um, today, I mean, we learn, students learn through textbooks, lectures, and videos, and they do some activities to reinforce the learning. That means the first place for the information or the knowledge is usually the textbook, the lecture, or the video. And the activities are just to reinforce. And um, what uh, I am doing is I'm just activities. There is no textbook, no videos, and no, um, and no lectures. So how should this go? Um, and I try to remove all these animations to save time. But uh, here is an analogy between uh, uh, football, uh, football and uh, learning. So I'm, uh, as you can see, <clears throat> Mike. Okay. The, thank you. So you see the when you when you uh, play when you uh, want to be a good football player, you need to build up your skills step by step. In the learning, we call this. Um, schema theory, and how do I implement it? I implement it by recall questions, review questions, and control access to the activities. Everything on my model is questions. So uh, the, uh, the, the most important one is the motivation. The motivation uh, in, in football is to score and to win, and you need and this is called a, a learning inquiry-based theory. And this is about a quiz. So you want to solve every question correctly and make, have a good grade in the quiz, although it is not graded. I mean, it doesn't go to the grade book as assessment. It is just for learning. It's feedback for about how, how you learn. Now you need to concentrate when you have the ball. And here also, I must make, uh, the, uh, I must make the students able to concentrate. I have to, 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 to um, pay attention to the cognitive, um, uh, cognitive uh, learning, uh, cognitive load theory and the cognitive uh, theory of multimedia learning. And how is this done? By uh, posing challenging questions and removing distractors in the, in the questions. So I need the, uh, then they, they have to move. This is the most important thing also. Um, they have to move, and this is active learning, constructivism, and my students research, read, observe, think, feel, analyze, discover, guess, code, compile, check, debug, set up, implement, measure, and evaluate towards the answer. This, uh, they, you can ask them to do this, but the Moodle quiz asks them to enter an, uh, an, an answer, that they, whatever they do here, they have to answer a question and get them um, if this answer is correct or this is, there is no, no way to run away from it. Then they have to think. This is deep learning. They are brainstorming questions. I'll show an example. They, they have to take time. Uh, you cannot hurry too much. And this is the self-paced learning. It's very, very important. And uh, the activities are untimed. So, they, yeah, you need to ask for help. And this is the scaffolding in learning. And they are fee feedback and they are hints in the activities, and you need to evaluate your performance. And this is very important. This is evaluating your performance in the activity, or in the game, and for this you need immediate feedback in learning, and this is the checking the answer and reading the feedback and the checking the quiz grade. Exercise, they are reinforcement learning, and this is, um, they are reinforcement questions, and they are exercises on Moodle also. And then you watch your progress. This is the meta metacognition. And um, here you answer a learning survey. I'll show an example and watch the question type. What is the question type? I'll talk about it. So the how. This is uh, the website. You could also have a look. This is called learnsmartly, uh, learn-smartly.com. And <clears throat> Yeah, students uh, go to this website, uh, uh, get some information about the courses, and they, uh, they sign up for Moodle, and then I give them an enrollment key, and then they go to the course uh, uh, page. For example, here, this is for Java. What is here, this, uh, this, is, the, this is the grid format of, uh, of courses on Moodle, and uh, I call these chapters. 
um, for example, this is chapter four about um, control structures. As you can see, this is, this is what my students did last week. So on 13th of September, for example, this is about the selection structures in, in Java. And they are here for three main components. It is the learning quiz. It is the learning activity. And uh, then learning survey, it is one question survey about their perception. And then there is a review quiz, which is like a um, recap quiz. And as you can see, the activities are connected. They cannot skip to one before completing the previous ones. So let me, if, if you click on LQ42, for example, you get uh, to the quiz page. And this is this image that shows the main, um, the main target of this quiz or learning activity. It is about loops. The loops, usually in lectures, we, give, we, uh, we teach them in 10 or 15 minutes. But here I pay very much attention how to, 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 how to convert a problem or an algorithm from, uh, let's say, a formula into a loop. This is not a trivial, you will see. Now, the students can access the, the, the quiz. And this is the first question. Usually, when we start our lecture, what, we, what do we say? We say, last time we did this and that, and we mentioned this and that, and so on. I don't say it. I let, I let the students say it by, by answering this question. Please pay attention to this. I can, this is a review question, and this is drag and drop into text. Then I post a problem here. So by running a code, they have to run a code to discover something. And here what they discover is, I hope that most of you are some programming skills. Here these are three loops, the same, uh, different uh, syntax, but they give the same. And the students will discover this by running the code. This is functional code. Of course, they copy it into the, uh, their uh, Eclipse and, and run it. Now we have run the code. Now we want to understand it. This is now we need to understand the con concept of loops. So this is, uh, we analyze the same code, as you see. So by, by questions, again, I don't analyze, they analyze <clears throat> by answering this question. Then there is a reinforcement. I mean, um, I'm just asking if the uh, uh, specific in, uh, information uh, or, or skill here about, uh, about the loops, that the loops must have identical statements. Is it true or false? Just to make them think about it again. And then I do this reinforcement again for, for the code itself. Then now we start the, the interesting topic, which is um, the factorial problem, calculating the factorial of a number. How can we make it as a loop? This is, we know it by heart now as programmers, but it is not a trivial, actually. You can see it here. Now, the first step to do this, you have to remind them of this. What is this? They have learned it at school. Now I, I'm asking it as a question. What is it? Then not only... Uh, as a concept, but as an application, because they will run codes and they will verify results. And now they have to re to calculate the they have to cal uh, calculate the factorial of the numbers given in the table, and then I pose a concept question here, uh, and then from the concept, we go to a brainstorming question. This is an essay question where they have to tell me if they can convert this formula in into a loop. Again, I ask them explicitly, don't use the internet, think about it. Then, uh, after this, we will go through it. Now we are learning a procedure, uh, how to convert such a formula into a loop. And we do this by, by, by doing again. So the first, uh, the first step, I give uh, a code that is actually an implementation of how humans calculate the factorial, as you see in the, the left side and then they have to run it, and then they fill in the table. Now we start to change in this code into a loop, uh, step by step, and they every time they have to write code, complete code, actually using the close question type. And we do this through multiple steps until we get into the final code here. We, and then they have to reinforce it by running the code and checking that it works properly. So you see that we are now in code five, and then they analyze it again and to enforce. And here, okay, now I'm doing the same with the for loop. I did it with the while, now with the for. And then uh, here we analyze in the for, the for loop uh, and so on. And then we advance to, to other topic, which is how can you break 
how can you break a, a loop or how can you, uh, you uh, um, escape the current iteration and so on. And then we give um, reinforcement and we give a last example. This is, this is how, how it is. Uh, all all uh, lecture sessions are replaced by this type of, of activities. So the results, of course, there are some results, there are two publications about them that show the effectiveness of, of this approach and the satisfaction of students. I have a lot of data. Um, here, my students in the first, uh, on the second year, sophomore students, 80% of them, they say, oh, even the embedded systems in, in the, as the seniors on the right side in this term, this term after the second week, I ask them, so they, they want this approach rather than lectures. Not only this, I ask them why, if they said no or yes, why the most, the most mentioned reason is because I, control, I can control my learning and learn at my, my, my own pace. This is really the, what, what they are mentioning. So these are the results. This is how they perf performed on this specific activities I, I showed you out of 10. And this is the learning uh, survey is their satisfaction. And as you can see, they, most of them they find these activities interesting and motivating, but also challenging. It's very, very important to, to give them this challenge. It's not trivial to answer uh, these questions. So next, why I am here? I am here actually to, to, uh, uh, to offer uh, these courses to anyone who is interested. We have five courses on the platform, Python, Java, Digital Logic Design, Embedded Systems, and Real-Time Operating Systems. For the last two courses, if you teach them anywhere, um, the, we need hardware kit, Arduino-based, not so much. Uh, otherwise, um, they have the, we can use a software um, available. So um, this is one way. Another way, if you are interested to know more, more about how, how uh, to do this, is not a straightforward, honestly. How can you tran uh, translate the, the content into activities that, uh, that, are, that are challenging but doable without your voice? The best, uh, the, the most what I do in the classroom, I answer questions. And when my students went to distance learning, uh, uh, Corona time, so they, we, had no, we had no issue. So uh, if, you, if you would like any, uh, to know more about this, uh, just uh, talk to me and uh, I'm happy, uh, happily ready to, to help. Thank you so much. Okay, yeah. we, we've got time for uh, oh, sorry. We've got time for plenty of questions. Um, Hi. Uh, thank you. Good to know people's moving away from lectures because really so boring. Uh, two questions. The first thing is, do you find that it takes a longer time to set up these type of courses compared to like the old way of, of doing courses? So does it take you a longer time to set up these active learning courses? A lot. <laughs> yeah. Second question, uh, do you have any interactions with your students in this course uh, and via yeah. which platforms? Yeah, yeah. So when we start the first time, enormous. Let's say on average, it takes me for one activity 20 hours. That so I mean, after all the experience teaching the course, Doing an activity, it takes on average perhaps 20 hours. So if you don't, you are not ready, you can't take my courses, <laughs> okay? But uh, this is really, really, it is, because you have to sit in the, you have to predict how the students would respond to everything in the, in, in the questions. It is very, very hard. And I have to code and run and compile and debug and, and all these things, yeah? It is, it is artwork. I, I don't I don't have uh, now uh, um, let's say a uh, recipe how, how to do it I sit and start to sometimes it takes longer sometimes it takes shorter but sometimes up, up to 35 hours one activity took me so it's something that you think it is it is uh, I know it <laughs> I have always explained it in one hour but how can you do it as activity with without your voice but it shows, it shows that without putting so much effort, students cannot understand so much. Yeah? And this, they have to go, I, 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 I'm spending 20 hours on one activity. I am saving, I don't know, thousands of hours on the student side. And they are very happy. And they are learning in, in, in depth. This, 
I spent a lot of time learning the technicality of Moodle, how to create, and now I have my own Moodle on Digital Ocean because our university switched to Blackboard, unfortunately. Um, this is this is another another aspect. So the second question was about. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Hey, you also forgot. <laughs> ah, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, so, interaction, so at, very good. Very yeah, good. so at what stage okay. do you have interaction? Yeah, yeah, interaction is very important. Now in the classroom, the students come, depending on many, many things, either I ask them to come or not. So when they come, I ask them to sit close to each other and help each other. So because it is about software and coding, sometimes hardware connection and doing something. So the classroom is like a lab. They interact a lot and they enjoy a lot. Uh, in, the, in the Corona time, we, I created a forum, a, a Q and a Q and a forum on Moodle uh, to ask questions and answers. Everyone can ask, everyone can answer. Unfortunately, there is not so much interaction between the students. So this is, I mean, we, this is the, what I try to do. But I, again, I believe if, if the questions are well done, the students have less inquiries and less uh, doubt, it goes, it goes uh, without issues. Most issues I have when the students need to, to connect hardware because it's not straightforward. It's not, uh, they need some support. 